I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Village Board meeting of August 8th. Roll call. Kokoros? Here. Possession? Giannotti? Here. Thierry? Here. Stacy? Here. Kokoros? Here. Uh, in your packet, you have the minutes of the last meeting. Are there any changes or additions? If not, can we have a motion to approve it? So moved. There's a motion on the floor. Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call. Kapros? Yes. Kinati? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Krause? Yes. Does anyone from the audience wish to address the board? Okay. Um, we have a new police officer that has joined us, and if Chief Fleming would do the introductions. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor and members of the village board. I'm very happy to introduce uh, uh, Gabriel Schmidt. She's right over here. Here he is. <laughs> Um, Gabriel comes from us, comes to us from the Chicago Police Department. He spent 10 years there. He told me that um, when he left, the district commander said, "You're leaving already. I haven't even learned how to pronounce your name." But I have. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel Smith. It doesn't look like that, but it's Smith. Gabriel Smith. Gabriel comes very highly recommended. I talked to his lieutenant and three sergeants before uh, we hired him. All of them gave him raving reviews. An excellent police officer. We have all the confidence in the world that he's going to do a great job here, and um, we welcome him with open arms. Uh, we really need people like him, and um, he's going to do a great job. So welcome, Gabriel. Thank you. Uh, we'll let you uh, shake everyone's hand around and let you get this out. Thank you. Okay, nice to see you. Okay. You brought a bunch of moral support too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Village court report. Our total tax income received in the month of July totals two hundred thirty-four thousand three hundred sixty dollars and fifty-five cents. Um, also, the Knights of Columbus are requesting permission to hold their annual intellectual disability fund drive feature from Friday to September 16th through Sunday, September 18th, attached as a copy of the request and um, a standard approval letter that I usually send to them every year that you approved in the past. Let me know if anybody has any questions or changes to any of the rules, um, and they will comply with any COVID restrictions in effect at, that, at the time. Uh, this is something that they do every single year, and they've always been very cooperative. Uh, and I just wanted to mention this year's uh, IML conference will be held in Chicago from September 15th to the 17th at the Hilton Chicago. In case any of the board members are interested in attending, I can take care of your registration. Just let me know if you're interested or not. Uh, if you want to see what the conference program looks like, all of the list of the items that are going to be available to um, attend are at iml.org slash conference, and they should have a more detailed list coming out in the next few weeks, too, so that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Beautification Commission. Nothing to report. All right. 4th of July Commission, Trustee Krause. Uh, the next meeting is August 31st at 6.30 p.m., any news before then, Joe? Not really. Okay. That's all I have there. All right. Youth Commission. Bob, anything going on that you know of? Oh, that's Ben's committee, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, yeah, they had, a successful, they had a successful kitty parade. I think they assisted with National Night Out, Youth Commission. Or is it about the National Night Out? Uh, I think they share. I don't know the face made it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, they it's help it. Do they help you at all? Um, they do have uh, some events scheduled, but I can't tell you exactly what they are. All right. All right. Historic Preservation Commission, Trustee Kaporis. All right. Uh, next meeting is August 17th. Uh, they're still going to need help to clean up the dates you have to be done for that. So, so. 17th, isn't the clean up date? No, 17th okay. is the next meeting. Uh, we would like to make it the clean up date. The sooner the better. Do it that night? Uh, if we can do another. Will they be ready? Meeting. 
Okay. It's ready. I mean, we've got right. supplies. We just need to get in there and do the work. And on the 17th, though. And what's, what time is the meeting? Uh, it is at 6 p.m. o'clock. We shall see. Uh, okay, under my report, um, I wanted to uh, appoint Joe Gardner to Feature Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, for those of you who don't know him, Joe used to be a trustee. He was in charge of public works for a lot of his time on the board, and uh, he may or may not have been replaced by someone else <laughs> who ran the same year. But Joe expressed his interest in plan commission to me when we had one of the public hearings about the, um, the business park. He said he really missed being part of this, so um, he, he said if another opening came up, uh, would I consider him? So I'd like to uh, put him on plan commission, replacing, of course, Dennis Tachenhorst, who has passed away. Um, so if anyone would like to make a motion for that appointment. I'll go ahead and make a motion to appoint Joe Gardner to the planning uh, PNC commission. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. second? All right. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? <coughs> what's the uh, term? Pardon? What's the? Uh... It is a two-year term. Okay. I believe it's a two-year term. I think some of them are, I have to see what they're they overlapping terms. Months. They have, yeah. a, there's like three of them that come one year and then there's two the next. I think yeah. there's one they skip, but I think this is a two-year term. It two depends on which term Dennis gave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'll call it, yes. Yeah. Okay, roll call. Kraus? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Giannotti? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Uh, the new LED sign is up and running, yay. Uh, there was a training session last week that, unfortunately, I was not able to attend. How did that go? It went very well. Um, it's it's very easy to program. It's a little tricky. You, you've got to kind of play with it a little bit because I was playing with it this morning. But it's got a lot of standard backgrounds that you can put in there. You can change the fonts. You can change what it does and how it does it. And you can pull things off and put them on. It's going to take a little time to create new content for it, but it's... It looks so beautiful. It when, does. I mean, compared to when we're putting it on our screen and then you put it on there, it's just is, like, wow. Is it supposed to show actual weather or show the sun and make you feel that it's pouring rain out? Because they have the sun <laughs> out there. Like, it's, it's sunny. Yeah, no, no the sun five, is a background. Pounds. It's just a background. That's just a background, but then the weather and the time is, is all put in as a separate module within that, so we have, that can change at any time. I was playing with it, that's why it was the sun today. Okay. It's like, to make you feel good. <laughs> that was before it rained that I did that. <laughs> All right. Well, good job programming. And uh, thanks to Brandy, who was on vacation, actually, at, at All Right Sign. She was out of town when they started putting the sign up. So she preloaded about six screens. And as soon as she got back in town, she threw them up there because we didn't have time to get anything on the sign before, uh, before the programming day. So she helped us out a lot with that. Uh, South Suburban Mayors and Managers released a local elected and appointed official salary survey and the results are closed, enclosed for your review. They don't have everything about every local town, but it was very interesting to see the range of salaries for uh, mayors and trustees in the area. Uh, the salaries for Beecher are the current ones, not the newer ones that we adopted. Um, I met with See, it's been about a week and a half, almost two weeks ago, with the CEO of uh, the company that runs the nursing home here in town. And we walked the property along with their contractor who was coming out to kind of figure out what, what quotes they needed to do the work on the front of the nursing home. So what they're going to do, he just got the quote from them Friday, and of course I don't have their prices, but basically the work that they're looking for, and it wasn't complete. But they're going to finish the sidewalk installation from both of the entries, which is the south end and the center part that's unfinished right now. Those are both going to extend to the patio. Uh, they're going to finish the curb all around the edge that's missing. They're going to um, replace the south end of the parking lot that stretches from the sign to the south end to that south exit to come in and out. Uh, backfill everything to the right grade. They're going to re raise the sewer to the correct grade as well as replacing deteriorated rings on the other two sewers, restripe that lot that's supposed to be for employees. Um, with the, the nursing home itself has to arrange with someone else to be able to do the plantings and everything once they get all the grading done. And they had left out the part he had asked for a quote for wrought iron fencing in front of where the patio is and he had, didn't have that quote yet. 
Um, he is actually leaving the company. This is Ron Nunziato, their CEO. He is leaving them, and I think he's only going to be there. He might be gone by now or one more week. So he wanted to make sure he got it budgeted before he left. He wanted to make absolutely sure he had all the quotes in place to make sure that it was something set in stone when he left. And his uh, replacement couldn't meet us that day, but he is aware of the project, and it's hopefully going to go from that step you know, to where they complete it. I haven't talked to him this week yet because he just got his quotes in on Friday. So uh, I will get a better schedule for when it's going to happen, but uh, you know, we addressed everything that that was a problem out there. Some of it he wasn't even aware of, some areas around the corner where the ground had never been leveled and you know, in front of some of the resident rooms. So um, hopefully it, it goes according to schedule, but I will keep you updated. Yeah, he was responsible for how many nursing homes? Yeah, yeah I forgot what he had. 30 yeah. Some? yeah, 30 something nursing homes. Yep. <clears throat> um, I'll let Bob take most of this next one. There have been changes to the sales tax rulemaking that created a flaw in the internet sales tax collections that was brought to the attention of IML, WCGL, and SSMMA. Um, and yes. Um, if you remember a couple of years ago, through the this we were pushing the internet sales tax. So you, 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 you buy things from point of purchase, that community gets the sales tax instead of no sales tax at all for internet providers. And there was a deal of contact made uh, throughout the country, and everyone should be sharing in the 5%. And that is true in all off-state off -state purchases. If you purchase something out of state, the village gets the 1% sales tax, and the state of Illinois gets the 5%. However, the Illinois Department of Revenue, in its administrative rulemaking, has determined that a Amazon fulfillment center is technically a brick and mortar retail facility, and that host municipality gets to keep the full sales tax. Hence, in Moni, they are generating sales tax exceeding $11 million a year. And if you know where Amazon is delivering to, it's coming at the expense of communities uh, around Moni. Now, great for Moni, that, that's not the purpose of this. We're not picking on Moni, but it's true of all. 11 fulfillment centers across the state. Uh, Edwardsville, uh, Markham, uh, there's several that are collecting the sales tax. Uh, some fulfillment centers aren't, so the Illinois Department of Revenue is not being consistent in how they're administering the tax. And it's ironic the city of Chicago doesn't get any sales tax from any Amazon sale. So we're hoping that we can get enough allies in hand produce a sales tax collection system that is fair to everyone, okay? And it's not fair right now. Um, we're not concerned about the home rule sales tax. If those communities are collecting their extra point on home rule, they can keep that. That's not the issue. Our issue is the one point they're collecting that we should all be sharing. Um, and that we're going to try to change. Of course, you've got some, some of these members are very vocal and not wanting to change it. Uh, a community like Beecher, who does not have an interchange, uh, does not have the, the infrastructure for a hands-on fulfillment center, will never receive the benefit of a center of that name. And uh, it's just not fair. Just by geography, we're going to be punished. So we're trying to get that rule changed. If you buy a product and it's shipped to your home, the, the municipality where it was shipped to should get the same. The one point. If the fulfillment center is located in a town that's home rule and they get an additional point, that's not the issue. But we're trying to get that done. There are several mayors and other communities in the area that are finally seeing hard data. Because we, we thought this was true, but we didn't have the hard data. We have the hard data now. So we're going to try to get that changed. That's all I have. And then McDonald's here in town, they're doing a major upgrade. They're doing kitchen upgrades, I believe, as well as changing the drive through lanes. There's going to be an extra order window. There's going to be an extra lane to come around the outside. They're configuring it so that they don't lose any parking. Um, they did their permit today? Or yes, their that? permit was issued today. Uh, this will be, quote unquote, their most modern McDonald's design. So this is an upgrade that will last 20 years for them. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be, it looks like from the plans, it's not the typical, like when you go to Bourbon A with some of them where they have two order lanes. It no. looks like the order window is still just going to be one window. 
but there's two pickup windows and there's a way you can get around one pickup window so I'm not sure how they're going to stage their orders but looks interesting. Yeah, they have key orders inside. <coughs> and then um, Bob was at was it an online meeting this morning when you were alerted to Bob a meeting? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So he was alerted. They were discussing a meeting going on tomorrow with Governor State University uh, regarding the airport. And apparently a lot of the local mayors had been invited to this, but we had not, nor had Piatone. So um, made a few phone calls, called SSMMA, and then we called um, Doug Pryor or County CED who placed a call to parties who were running the meeting, <laughs> which was the Reggie Greenwood, the, the Supply Chain Innovation Center Business Incubator down at SSMMA. Well, in any case, at the last minute, we were sent an invitation um, that, you know, unfortunately, we had been overlooked, the two towns that were right next to the airport. But it's apparently a briefing by a private sector developer who may or may not be interested in, uh, you know, coming to the plate as far as this airport. I don't know how serious it is, but it's happening tomorrow afternoon. Uh, short notice, I'm not going to be able to make it, but... I was told it's the same routine. So. Yeah, sir. All right. And that is all I have to report. So for committees, finance and administration, Trustee Kaporis. Consider a motion approving the treasurer report, Donna. The July month end total for the village accounts, $3,965,778.35. The July month end for the commission accounts, $278,113.19. The total combined, $4,243,000. $891.54. The July month then in general, $1,169,555.90. For the July commission and non-AP payments, the total was $304,264.40. You can see uh, quite a bit of activity with the 4th of July, which is not unusual. Um, but other than that, seems pretty standard. Does anyone have any questions? I'll just point one thing out. If you look at the 4th of July account, last year at this time we had 58000 on account. We've had two festivals in 12 months. We had one Labor Day last year, 4th of July this year. And I know that most of the bills have been paid by the 31st of July, with the exception of the fireworks bill. Half Correct. of the fireworks, 15. Yes. So you can take 15 off that 148. Um, they basically increased their fund balance by about 100,000. Yes. One year. Yes, they had a, so a very good year. Yeah, and I'm just stating a fact there. I'm not speculating as to their PL right. statements, which <clears throat> Nelson holds dear to his heart and won't release until yes. the meeting. <laughs> but I'm just looking at account balances and kind of mm, idea. Right. And it is unusual having both of them in the same fiscal year. Yes, but it is. Still. It's weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it did, last year at this time, we, we had, the last couple months, we had two festivals on the line. All right. I'll go ahead and make a motion approving the treasurer's report for the month prior. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call? Kaparos? Yes. Unati? Yes. Thierry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Variance yes. reports are enclosed for your review. Consider a motion approving the bills and payroll for the previous month. Um, so we, we added a few Johnsons. Yeah, yeah, I got them right here. Uh, got uh, ComEd 8957-89, Constellation Energy 168-31. Keisler's Police Supply, 933. Uh, Ray O'Haran, 192, 95. Standard and Associates, 450. Uh, Village of Piatone, 450. And Waste Management, 726.69. For a new total of 330,000. 
573.34. So I'll go ahead and make a motion approving the bills for the month prior, totaling $330,573.34. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. Kraus? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Ginati? Yes. Kofros? Yes. Uh, workshop on the discussion of the use of ARPA funds will be held at the next meeting after we close the regular village board meeting. Uh, please come prepared to discuss your proposed projects and priorities. Uh, there is no longer any restriction on the use of these funds and since we're under the $10 million cap. Uh, we have 304000 available after September 15th and another 230000 once we pay off the due to from the uh, water main replacement account. Uh, there may also be some residual funding to add to these amounts uh, and that would be from the lower cost of the LED sign. I just saw that bill, so maybe 10000 or so there. So. Um, Illinois Municipal Insurance Co-op quarterly report is in close for your review. At this time, there's $1,480,280 in unrestricted fund balance in the self-insured pool, and we have about 5% of this amount allocated to Beecher. Um, moving forward, decisions will be made as to how to deal with these funds, including hedging rates. And lastly, uh, need to establish a public information hearing on the proposed public safety facility. Uh, and this hearing should be at least 30 days prior to the referendum due to early voting, which is now very popular. The Bond Council has suggested two dates, Monday, September 9th, or Wednesday, October 5th, uh, with the time being 7 p.m. We'll also have to select a venue for the hearing uh, since our boardroom may be too small. And the 9th, or, did you say 9th or 19th? The 19th. Okay, sorry. So, and actually that would be the one, me personally, I would recommend. The third Monday? Yeah. I know as a fact there will not be a chamber meeting because their golf outing is that week, that Friday, and they never have a meeting on their golf outing. No, 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 on the chamber. Yeah, but you're having a golf outing. So. I don't anything else about the chamber. Okay. But I don't think they'll be able to it. Um, then if that's the date you want, then pick the venue. You want it out of the township? You want the community hall? I think here might be tight. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't do it here. And I, I like, personally, I like when we, if we're going to do a public hearing and something that it's not here, that because this is kind of, I, I don't know, it just kind of gets a different feel when it's not here. It feels more of a hearing like we're. So, I, I don't know, maybe the community hall. I mean, I guess we'd have to about, check on the It depends on how many people you would expect to attend. We're going to televise it and put it on TV so yeah. everyone sees the bond council. And we're also going to do the videos, which Ben was going to be talking about later on tonight. Now it's probably going to be Joe. But I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'd hate to move the meeting only have six people show up, too. I don't know how many people are going to show up. I think you're better off planning for a lot a of lot people of yeah. only having a few show up. Than, do you think Ambed's going to be even? With a little bit more space. We've had meetings there before too. Well, what, what do all those facilities have? What we need to run video and stream or what are we going to do? I know the township does. Yeah. The township meeting room does, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we've done that there, do it at the and we know it works. Yeah. Okay. Just Monday, September 19th at the township. Everybody good with the 19th rather than October 5th? Yeah. I think the sooner the better. The more time you have to get the information out if there is people with concerns or whatever it gives us more ample time to address it for the November referendum. We'll have the bond council here to explain the bonds and how it's going to affect taxes. We'll have the architect here to explain the design of the facility. Um, and I was promised renderings by Labor Day. So we can incorporate those into the video. So we're moving forward. But we have to move everything up 30 days because it's early voting. It's amazing the statistics. We're seeing a lot of early voters coming out. So let's get that word out in September. Yeah. All right. That concludes my report here. Okay. Public Buildings and Properties, Parks and Recreation Committee, Trustee Giannotti. All right. Uh, the status of 652 Penfield. Uh, this is the vacant lot next to the creek we purchased earlier this year. 
Uh, this lot has been surveyed and the easements uh, the village needs to complete the Penfield Street Improvement Project have been uh, delineated. Uh, the appraiser uh, in the process of determining a fair market value for the lot, um, which didn't we receive that, Bob? Yes, we did. Yeah, so we, after I printed this. On yeah, Friday, so I we received the appraisal and it came in at 11000 So, yeah. So, uh, paperwork has been turned over to the attorney for the <coughs> And you actually paid the appraisal bill tonight. Yes. So, that concludes my report. Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee, Trustee Stacy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the building department's monthly report is enclosed for your review, and the citizen planner training material is also enclosed in packet for your review. And that's my report. All right. Public Safety Committee, Trustee Terry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, police department's monthly reports enclosed for your review. Chief, do you have anything on it? <coughs> I do. Um, on, uh, on August 4th, we did a uh, crosswalk detail right here at Miller, where we had the uh, alert lights, so the person come presses the button, the lights go off, the cars are mandated to stop. So we did a detail there for two and a half hours, and we had two officers, and then we had an officer wearing a tank top and shorts that was the person pressing the button, gave him plenty of time to stop before he started walking the intersection, and we, we issued 30 people warning tickets. And one person was issued a ticket because their registration was revoked, but um, we only stopped one out of three violators because we didn't have enough cars to stop them. We only had two cars going out there. But we're doing it again um, Wednesday. We're not hiding what we want to do. We want to, we want to alert the public that this is really important. That that's where our kids walk to and from high school. So we're going to do it again uh, on Wednesday. And again, the goal is not to write citations, the goal is compliance. But we are going to write citations now, not warnings. We gave them we gave them warning day, now we're going to write citations on Wednesday and we're hoping that there ain't that many violations, but looking like they're probably friendly. So any semis in that list of the thirty stop or any of the semi trucks? I don't know. No, no. I'm not sure. And I did want to mention that um, for a national night out. Bob Hyde made two games himself. They were very popular at the National Library. <coughs> he spent a lot of time building these two games, and the kids had a great time and enjoyed themselves. So, thank you, Bob. Can I ask a question about yeah. Now, um, a few years ago, when we started that sort of program, they used to give a, like, that sort of, used to give an educational class for, like, grade schoolers, how to use those things, not just to press the button and walk, that they actually have to stop, make sure traffic stops. Is he doing that? Do you know? No, I'm not sure, but I'm sure. Can they look into that? Because I mean, as part of his educating the kids That's too. Good I idea. mean, writing people warning them tickets is great, but the kids just step out and somebody gets hurt. It's not really going to matter what you write. Um, I think they started the grade school just because that's you know the younger you get them, the easier it is. But people do fly through that. I'm up and down oh, yeah. there all day, going back and forth to work, and I mean the lights are flashing and. <laughs> you do it at the junior high too over there in church. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, the EMA monthly reports and close to your review. Uh, Director Hyman, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, I have one thing I'd like to tell um, We're in the process of renewing our patches. And this is what our new patches will be look like when they come in. Um, it's covered under our uniform allowance. So we've been talking probably two years on doing this, way before Dennis, when he was still director. And we finally move forward on it, and we feel this is a little more professional than what we have now. So um, we will be changing these in the very near future when we come in. That's good, thank you. Uh, code enforcement monthly report is also uh, in close to review. Uh, and then in regards to the national night out, um, on behalf of, you know, obviously. Uh, the village and the, the uh, Beach Police Department, I kind of uh, typed a letter, I think Bob sent it out to all of the trustees, but I just wanted to express, you know, my profound thanks to all those who participated in the National Light Out on uh, last Tuesday. Uh, the, sh the show actually supported, you know, it was to promote awareness, safety, and neighborhood unity. 
Uh, and this was present throughout the night, along with the importance of you know the police and the community relationships, uh, and then citizens' involvement, you know, to build a safer village and a nation. So, based upon our numbers of people who attended, um, we kind of went and, and used utilized it by our food. So, uh, we gave out 150 hot dogs, 200 hamburgers, uh, 300 ice cream cones. Uh, it was like over 600 drinks between the pop and the and the water, and then you know countless bags of chips and candy, and you know the no toy novelties and, and stuff that uh, EMA had uh, gathered and collected. So, um, as far as the individuals, you know, I, it was all hands on deck from a ton of people. Uh, and I know when I was up on the stage, I mean, just because there's so many people, you you just get lost in, in the moment. But um, you know, special thanks to you know the, the police department. Uh, there was officers that were there part-time, full-time, uh, the chaplains. I mean, everybody was there on a volunteer basis uh, from the fire department. I mean, bringing out all their apparatuses. I mean, uh, they did they did great. EMA, every single one of our EMA people were there and uh, doing with the games and from the... I mean, it was, it was uh, you know, I mean, I, I know uh, Denise, Dennis's wife, was there. Um, even helping out with with all this stuff. Public work. Hey, oh yeah. <coughs> I'm Are you good? <laughs> yeah. So um, and then uh, Beecher Public Works. Uh, you know, was there. Uh, you know, and they had they had their you know a couple of their uh, equipment there that uh, you know the kids were going there. I'm not sure how enthused those guys were sitting you know uh, on the hot asphalt, but you know it was it was definitely um, I know you know a lot of couple of kids thought it was pretty cool. So. Um, and then you know with the right, you know with the village employees and the Lions Club, the Fourth of July Commission. You know we had Dunkin' Donuts there, McDonald's. Um, you know the Team Juan Hernandez Pack group was there with their demonstration, and you know I, that was I, that was a big wow for me. I, those are a lot of uh, talented um, youths there. So um, a big thanks for everybody who showed their uh, support and, and helped make the night a success. So um, and then obviously a special thanks to all the village board members. You know, and the volunteers from the dump tank to the cooking, and I mean, you know, it, it was it was it was a great uh, I think it was a, a great night, a good spirit, neighborhood partnership. You know, was uh, I think it was, it was very successful. So I thank everybody who participated. Um, and then with that, uh, I'd like to also add. Um, I went to the Laraway Dispatch Board meeting. Uh, this was the first one that I've actually attended. Uh, and then, uh, if you look um, in your packets, I believe there was some stuff that uh, was reviewed and we discussed. Uh, the board actually amended its bylaws and passed the budget uh, when I, well, uh, myself and the uh, village administrator was there. So uh, it was kind of neat to see the inner workings of that group. Uh, and then um, <laughs> there, they also reviewed the. Four hours ago. Yeah. So um, I'll leave it at that. It was, it was a learning experience. Um, but the the uh, the board also reviewed the spending of the CARES Act fund, and you know it was uh, 1.5 million dollars will be rebated to 32 agencies. So that looks to be 32,700 dollars in refunds probably coming to the Beecher Police Department. So um, like I said, that stuff is also enclosed for everybody to view. And then um, we're still working on our draft for the uh, police commissioner ordinance and hoping that will be uh, ready within the next uh, meeting or two. And that concludes my report. All right. Public Works Committee, Trustee Krause. Thank you. Public Works Department monthly report is enclosed along with the Water Department report and Sewer Department monthly reports. Consider payment in the amount of $499,297.17 to MJ Underground as partial payment for the completion of the Gould Street Water Main project pending receipt of grant funds. All but $30,000 of this invoice will be grant and the rest will come from the Water Main replacement account. The next payment will require the use of ARPA funds sometime in September and October. So I'd like to make a motion um, for payment in the amount of $499,297.17 to MNJ Underground uh, as partial payment towards completion of Gold Street Water Main Project and receipt of grant funds. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. 
There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. Kaparos? Yes. Ginati? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Gold Street Street Water Main update, Matt. Um, all of the water main has new water main has been installed. The pressure testing took place last week, and everything has passed. Uh, I did speak with the chlorination company today. They'll be out here tomorrow morning for chlorinating all of the new main and sampling on Wednesday and Thursday. And by Friday, um, they could be um, hooking up new services. So it'll be either. Friday or starting next week to hook services up to the new water main and eventually abandoning the old water main. So. And they have punched a four inch into the... Not yet. No, that'll be part of their service installs. Yeah. Any other questions? Lead service line? Roll call. Um, I haven't spoken with Brant. I know that they were going to be back in um, late September or October to continue on... Um, Restorations. I did get an email today from Robinson Engineering just saying that they were getting ready to do some finalization on their paperwork, but nothing, nothing too real important with that. So, well number three update. After the well went back online when the variable drive was replaced, we noticed a high pitch squeal inside the motor. Thinking it was harmonic issue, called the electrician back out, uh, but all voltages and amperage <coughs> were good. Called Lane at Western to examine the motor. It was determined that the lower bearings are worn in the motor. The motor was installed in 1988 and it has tens of thousands of operating hours. We are given two options, install a new motor for 18 or rebuild uh, the old motor for 11. Given the age of the motor, motor and the ease in which we found a new motor on the market, we decided to have it replaced. Uh, we reviewed several competitive prices on the motor. We will keep well three online until the old motor locks up or the crew comes with the new motor for one day replacement job. We will use leftover funds from the proposal uh, for generator five, for generator well number five. Since this project will not be done this year, our calculations are right. Motor pump more than a billion gallons uh, into the water system, and see the enclosed proposal for work. Uh, Penfield uh, STP update. Uh, um, we are moving right along. Uh, we are going to have a pre-con with. Iroquois soon. I don't have an exact date yet, uh, but IDOT wants that meeting to be specifically with the IDOT people, and then after that meeting occurs, we'll have a, a real coordinating meeting with ourselves locally. We'll get the school district superintendent there, the fire chief, and we'll figure out a plan for that road moving forward with the schedule. Of course, Matt, I'm looking at Matt because basically us four plus the contractor have to figure out right. how we're going to do it. Well, it will work. Uh, you're quite paving. It's not their first rodeo. And it's amazing what the contractor can bring to the table with ideas. So until we get your point in the room, we don't know exactly how we're going to do it. But it will get done, and it will be done safely. Is there any word done when that meeting is going to be with IDOT, the, their initial one with? It's in Springfield right now for bid review. So we're at their mercy, gotcha. as usual. Okay. Is that is that where you guys will sit down and basically come up with traffic and like yes. plane shutdown and all that stuff. Yes, and the school superintendent, the fire chief will be at that table because I want to make sure their input is received and we all agree on a plan. Because, you know, the fire station basically is going to be shut down for several days while they cross that portion of the road. So we're going to have to provide them some alternatives and we've got some ideas to make sure they can adequately respond to calls. So. Okay. <coughs> Uh, 2022 street paving program, Matt? Uh, that should be going out to bid hopefully next month. Um, I, I, it kind of feeds into the curb and gutter replacement program. Um, I just went out to bid for the sidewalk and curb. I need to get the curbs done before I can do asphalt work behind it. So um, I'll be hopefully going out for asphalt bids next month. Um, the curb and gutter um, as well as sidewalk Bids are due on Thursday, August 18th, and will be voted on on the Monday, August 22nd board meeting. Can you explain so, to the public, Matt, and I know we've had several calls in the village hall about what a pink X means and a pink dot? So our, our, <clears throat> our difference that um, we internally um, do, it, it's not going to make sense to anybody in the public, but um, the pink X is for a removal and a pink dot is for mudjacking. Um, mudjacking is a... Uh, 
less expensive alternative than to replacing um, due to you know concrete costs and, and labor involved as well. Um, so if you see a pink dot in front of your house, that means that they're going to level your concrete where they can where they drill holes into it and they um, force a slurry in underneath it, which then in turn pushes the concrete slab up to meet the existing grade of the concrete slabs around it. So it reduces the tripping hazard or eliminates it completely. Um, so pink X is replacement and a pink dot is for mud jacking, but both of which are out to bid right now. Um, mud jacking should hopefully take place here within the next week or so. Consider a motion declaring the 1984 P30 van as surplus property. Public Works is now <coughs> using the trailer and the pickup truck is expected to arrive this fall. The van is ready for sale and on display in front of the Village Hall. <coughs> so I'll make a motion declaring the 1984 P30 van as surplus property. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. I'll add a couple things to that real quick. We have had quite a few inquiries since we did start promoting the sale of it. Um, we have received three uh, sealed bids so far. Um, bid opening, if this is passed tonight, to um, consider it as surplus. The bid opening will be next Monday morning at 9 o'clock. We paid 4200 for it in 1998. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. So I, I would not be surprised if we got more than that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We've, we've, we've had a, a lot of inquiries on it. Um, we, 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 yeah, I, I've gotten five or six phone calls out at the shop specifically on it. So. Even with the extension cord running, it doesn't work, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it needs work. It, it, it needs some TLC, that's for sure. <laughs> As is. Yep, that's it. Yep. Yes. Stacy? Yes. Yeah. Terry? Yes. Chinati? Yes. Cabros? Yes. Lost track of my thought there for a minute. <laughs> you bought it off another municipality, John. That's all I have to do. All right. Economic Development Community Relations Committee, Trustee Gaynati. We. All right. So uh, I have here the results of the holiday weekend uh, coordination meeting that was held last week. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there, but Ben sent me a Nice email here uh, with some minutes. Um, so if at any point, Bob or Marcy, you want to add anything to this. Um, uh, there was members from the 4th of July Commission, the Township, the Chamber, the Lions Club, and the Fire Protection District, as well as uh, members <coughs> of the Village Board. Um, so the original date that was talked about was the weekend of December 9th. Um, but in some conversations, there's uh, some scheduling conflicts uh, with some of the events that they wanted to try to roll out. Uh, so there's been some discussion about possibly moving it to that first weekend of December after Thanksgiving. Um, so we'll be looking for some input from the village board. Yeah, it would actually that. be the last weekend in November. Well, yeah, but that would be the Friday, right? So that means December 2nd? Is that Saturday, the second of December? The Saturday, Saturday the third. So, so yeah, so it'd be December second for the Friday. There were conflicts no matter what. So we were looking at the weekend at first of 9th, tenth, eleventh, and that's what was brought yes. up at that meeting. Um, the Creek Country Christmas is the third, fourth, or second, third, fourth. Second, third, correct. fourth. And uh, Thanksgiving would be on the twenty fourth. Yes, so we had talked about 26th, 27th, possibly that weekend. Yeah. So when we thought about the 10th and 11th, it turned out that there's a large family in town that has a family party in the bottom of the, um, the community building, so that with a band, so the parking lot's going to be full. We could work around it, but then we talked about if we do a light parade, trying to get people into the parking lot when the parking lot's full. There were a lot of ideas that got kicked around. I should let you yeah. know with the minutes oh. first for, for why we started no, kicking around not. ideas to move. The date. Yeah, and from what Ben explained to me, the reason for originally putting it on that weekend was that the Lions Club has breakfast with Santa that's already planned for the 11th. Uh, the township on that Tuesday has their senior uh, holiday dinner scheduled for that day. So it was kind of trying to roll everything together. Um, the chamber intends to light their trees the same night as we do the tree lighting down in the park, um, continuing with putting them on Route 1. Um, 
uh, the fire department has agreed to, you know, uh, parade him with Santa. I'm sure we'll reach out to the police department if they want to join in with that. And uh, obviously the light parade was discussed, as uh, Marcy alluded to, uh, leaving from Zion and coming down Penfield to Fireman's Park, uh, concluding with the uh, tree lighting ceremony. There was a member of the community that was interested in heading that off. Oh, possibly. Um, possibly. Uh, Waterman. Waterman, yeah. So there was somebody that is interested, along with the uh, Chamber and the Lions Club helping coordinate that. Um, and Ben's got in here, possible village float, uh, if somebody wanted to take on that. Uh, then he's got some notes about the tree lighting logistics, um, you know, bringing Santa in, lighting the tree. Um, and there's a few different design, uh, <laughs> ideas, possibly him and the 4th of July Commission do some kind of food uh, handout. Um, get the churches involved maybe with cookies and hot chocolate and coffee again. Um, like a Santa's workshop type deal, get out the uh, Youth Commission uh, has a mailbox that everyone's interested in uh, getting out, maybe doing like a reindeer feed station. There's a lot of different ideas thrown around on here. Um, and some sort of like Toys for Tots or some sort of collection that's similar to what we did last year. Um, there was also an idea of doing like an afternoon um, kids movie in the upstairs of the community building, which is kind of what spurred moving the date because of that family reunion being scheduled, um, as well as a house decorating contest that would kick off um, some point in November and uh, end on the date of the tree lighting so that that could be announced at the park as well as the possibility of having a uh, more of an adult catered uh, music event on that Friday night that would kind of tie into this whole holiday weekend thing. So that's the general overview of it. I know Ben was going to look for some feedback from village board members on what their feelings were on that. Was there anything else you two wanted to add before? Well, and it, it started, it, basically the meeting was just to kind of kick ideas around for different things people would like to do. So it, it started with just doing it all on the Sunday where they had the, the pancake breakfast and then have the tree lighting at night. I was not real thrilled with that idea, having two Santas in one day and trying to wedge everything into one day. So then we started kicking around ideas for doing other things for the weekend. Township says they'd be happy to take care of doing the kids movie on the upstairs of the community building if we wanted to do a kids movie. We started just trying to brainstorm other things you could have to make it more of an event. Um, then we started running into roadblocks like the community building is going to be filled with people, the parking lot's going to be full, we thought about doing the light parade and Bob's idea was bring it down Hodges and then take it directly into the park that way. There's a lot of workarounds we could do. I actually sent an email around a couple of days later and said, are we really set on this particular weekend? And my only issue with going as late as the 10th or 11th is two weeks from Christmas and you're lighting a tree. It just seems like it's a little bit late to me, you know. Last year I know we did it on the same weekend as the pre-Christmas, but we did it <coughs> on Sunday because they didn't have a lot of events on Sunday and the thought was this is a local event, this isn't something we're not trying to bring other towns in to, you know, to turn into a big area event. It's just for Beecher, so we don't have to worry about what other towns are doing. But we always actually used to do the, the local Christmas thing on Thanksgiving weekend. And I think the main reason we didn't do that last year is because uh, we couldn't get the tree. <laughs> the tree was on a truck coming from Texas, and we couldn't get it here in time. So we scheduled it for the following weekend and then sat there praying all week that the tree was going to show up and we weren't going to have a tree lighting with some little you know, ceramic thing on a table. <laughs> so nothing has been set in stone yet, but you know we're still kind of kicking around debating about that weekend that we're going to do it. Um, we don't have to do it on the same weekend as the Lions Club Christmas thing. Yeah. Um, I, it, it, well, yeah, you know, what, the Lions, why does everything have to be on the same weekend? And it's the thing, the Lions Club even said, like, with, when, talk, when talking to them over the weekend, a lot of them said, you know, it would be nice to do it all as one combined event, but if they're going to get involved with the, the parade and stuff like that, <laughs> some of them well, would they concerned have, with having they so much Christmas going on. Santa will kids <laughs> get the choice to either do Christmas or breakfast with Santa or yeah. meet him at night, 
quite compete. Obviously. Yeah. And the other thing too is, is this gives the ability, you know, kids who maybe can't make it to the breakfast with Santa or can't afford to go, it gives them an opportunity to meet Santa as well and get to take a picture with Santa. And um, so, so it's like two weeks earlier in the season. You can have the tree yeah. for longer instead of just lighting it up on, I think it was the 10th or the 11th. It would have been the 11th. You know, you're halfway to... Or no, I'm sorry, it would have been the 10th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they were talking about doing a movie early in the afternoon and then doing the tree lighting later that evening and then having the adult stuff on the, the Friday with a live band or something like that. And these were all ideas. Um, me and Ben got some time to talk about this. Um, Saturday, and he had mentioned this. There's a lot of just different ideas that were thrown around, and nothing set in stone. It's just trying to get feedback, see where everyone's at. I'm confused. <laughs> what, I, I'm, I'm confused which date we're talking about. I mean, I know we're not doing the 10th or 11th. It's like, what you can't. We're just seeing you better off doing the 10th or 11th, or you better off doing the 26th, 27th. Well, I mean. I, I don't know how to say it's nice. I'm not too concerned about other people's events. other other yeah, other events that are going yeah. on. This yeah. is something we do for the community. If it can coincide with something else and it makes both events or all three or whatever events better, good. That's a great positive for the community. But and this is something we started and we're doing for the residents of the village. Whatever works for us and what we decide, I think that's what we should go with. Again, if it coincides, good, great. If not, I'm not gonna not I'm not gonna say don't do it on day A because someone else is doing something or not doing something or yeah. You know. Historically we've done it after Thanksgiving. That we when we used to do the house walk back when we used to have the light parade and the house walk, it was on that the Sunday after Thanksgiving. You know, that Thanksgiving weekend. I, mean, I think by law you can turn Christmas lights on for the day after Thanksgiving, right? That's, that's by the, law, you can that's turn the them out. Hobby, that's, that's Hobby Lobby is putting their trees up right now. <laughs> we can do it on any weekend. That was I, I kind of came back with the tent. I, I think that's a little bit late uh, to be lighting a tree. It just seems like it's too late in the season. Yeah. That was my thought. I didn't down. care for that. And what's that Sunday on the 6th? So we can we do that Sunday again or no? It's because we could the weekend before. I mean, like we did last year. Because, yeah, you have the availability of the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, or the immediate weekend after Thanksgiving, which would be the 25th, 26th, and 27th. The only problem is if you have a holiday, a lighted parade, you don't have the same night as Crete's because you can't get Crete's folks down here for ours. That was the big so you can't problem. can't do it on Sunday? Because I think there's on Saturday, isn't it? But that know. Sunday is the day where they have the town hall reserved for the birthday party? That was if that we was did it that, that, that no, weekend of the night. That was the following weekend. So why don't we just do it on that Sunday? Do you want to do it the 4th? On the 4th then? Mm -hmm. You're suggesting yeah. do it the 4th? Yeah. The 4th fourth, yeah, fourth would be the first weekend yeah, first in December. Week, yeah, yeah. Which would give you a week gap between Thanksgiving and this. So do the parade. If, That's the same weekend we did it last year. Yes. Last year, it's a good day last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's if we have it on the fourth? What's going to happen that day? That would have to. We we basically go back to everyone with. Here's when we're doing the tree lighting. What do you want to add to it? So um, it would be probably inquiring with the community building, seeing what the availability of the community building is, and then building off that mm -hmm. is basically what it would be. There's a lot of interested parties and in trying to tag onto this, not you know. If somebody wants to do, you know, if the township wants to do this, then they can do it. Here's when we're, basically the, the whole understanding that I got from Ben was, we're going to set our stuff in stone, and then whoever wants to add into that, and we'll try to coordinate as best we can with them. Mm -hmm. so and the Christmas was, or the breakfast with Santa was set in stone because yeah. the Ambit Hall was not available the weekend before. Yeah, there's always something at the Ambit Hall that weekend, so that's why it's yeah, the personal part. That's your Christmas yeah. party. Yeah. So. And the later you go in the year, the more you start competing with people's work Christmas parties. Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah, think so the weekend after like, Thanksgiving, a lot of people it's may, tight. may not be out of town yeah. with their families. You know. it, it makes well, Ben is going to be caught that weekend, but he says if we're going to do it that weekend, he'll set up we his stuff all the time. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to do it the Sunday then, like the tree? Yeah, well, here's the thing. So, I mean, do you, you really think we're in a draw? I, I don't know. 
and this is just this is just me talking out of the box here. Do you really think you're gonna get people to leave stuff decorated and come down here the Sunday after they just did the parade of lights in Crete? Are we gonna parade of lights? There's they kind of wanted to do it, yeah. The chamber like to do so it, yeah. 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 We do it. They might, they might not. I don't know that we have to plan it based on that. But if we do it on a that, Sunday, it, I think the tree lighting might get a little bit more draw doing it either a Friday night or a Saturday night over a Sunday night. Sunday. Especially with you still got kids in school and stuff like that. Yeah, and I know it's not it's super late early. at night, but. Like with the parade of lights and stuff like that, if you're going to do all that, I think people would be more apt to coming down if they didn't have to worry about getting their kids ready for school the next day. Because think about it, you're going to be, if you're doing a parade of lights and the tree lighting, you're talking two and a half, three hours down in the park. And a little and if it's cold, and, and if it's cold out or something like that, like, are people really going to want to spend the whole Sunday night down there and then have to get up for work and have to get their kids ready and stuff like that? We just need a big bonfire to keep them warm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah, I think on a Sunday you almost have to have everything concluded by six or six thirty. Exactly. Yeah. Saturday gives you a Friday little night. bit more Friday time. Saturday. Yeah, I I think the Saturday would probably be best. Yeah. Like like we kind of all said here, we're not trying to compete with Creed here. We're just trying to give people something local to go to. We're not trying to have this big blowout bash. We're trying to get a couple holiday events to get people in the community involved. Is more what we're looking for than trying, and that and that's what me and Ben talked a lot about on on Saturday night was, we're just trying to give people in the community something to come to, locally and enjoy and, and get together as a community rather than trying to have like a festival or something like that. It's just community events to try to get people out and enjoy the holiday season. So. Okay, come on, John. I know you got something to say. <laughs> He's ready, like He's ready to explode over there. He's ready to explode. Wait, not one. Uh, I think I think I at least learned something this weekend that when you try to do too much and you pile everything together into one thing, everything suffers because neither of them probably get the none of it really gets the attention it would get on a standalone, right? Um, I think that our concert in the park was sure there was heat issues but by nighttime it was beautiful it was gorgeous right but people were probably burnt out from being in the heat throughout the day for car show and a beef roast and everything else it's all starting at 11 o'clock and then you're still expecting people to be doing something at six to nine and some of what i heard with an afternoon with a movie and the thing i mean people with kids and stuff like that, you're you got like a couple hour span and <laughs> you got to capture it and that's it. If you're expecting them to do a breakfast and then a movie thing in the afternoon and then it, it just begins to parade. I, I love the idea of combining the parade and bringing the parade back because I, I think it was always a hit. I mean, people were, you know, in the freezing cold up and down the street watching these, these floats go by and I'm going into the park and, you know, um, Santa and Mrs. Claus being there. I love the idea of a reindeer feed station. I mean, get some reindeer there or something, you know, who knows. All that sounds great, but if you just try to do too much with movies and combining it the same day. The the breakfast, I, I think, with the Lions Club, I mean, I went to it, I can't even tell you how many years with my kids. It's great. It's a standalone thing, man. It's It, it doesn't need any help from a village tree lighting or anything like that. People are going to go to it no matter what, every year, because it's such a great event. It's, they do such a fabulous job with it, and the whole entrance with Santa. And, I mean, it's it's a, it doesn't need any help. It doesn't need to be combined with anything. Let it stand alone. It doesn't need it. Um, I, I think with what we're doing, I agree with Trustee Krause. I mean, this is kind of something we wanted to do. That's why the village spent all the money on this. And then, um, you know, if, if the chamber wants to organize the light parade in that, great. But I think we need to pick a date that we think that the tree lighting would be most successful and then if you know the chamber wants to do something and organize a light parade on the same day great do it but I mean, outside of that i personally think if you're going to do it that weekend the same weekend as creep avoid their light parade that's their best event do it friday night maybe you get somebody that gets their float ready a day early and they come and do ours because they're doing creeps on saturday night anyway 
I would suggest Friday night over Saturday night on that case. But I do, I do agree on Friday or Saturday night over a Sunday, mm -hmm. absolutely, because somebody was saying with kids and getting them ready. And we'll have to get a hold of their schedule. Yeah. I mean, I know it's that weekend, but we don't know exactly when they're going to do their thing. Their 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 Christmas light parade's always on a Saturday. I know, but that, you know why they do it on a Saturday because it's going to be the easiest way to get people to come out. It's going to be the easiest way to get people to actually participate in making a float because mm, getting off, off work. Like I mean, some some of these people might have to take off work on a Friday. Like they can take time off work on a Friday to get a float ready for a parade Friday night. Thanksgiving weekend. Can't you say can't, what time? What time? They, what time does it start? Can you do it at the same time? Just do it earlier? Yeah. Or no? And then the people yeah. that are here go to move, to move a lit float like that, no. Eight oh, miles is it. Yeah. 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 And that's why it says Thanksgiving weekend also still on the table. Yeah. Yeah. It, that Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend would work. Yeah. I mean, I, if you're running the risk of not having everybody in town because of like that town, but somebody at the meeting said just as many people are in town. Yeah, people, town. I said, yeah, yeah, people come town. in town. Yeah, yeah. and you got, yeah, so, you got families visiting. Yeah, I mean, that's the risk you take, you know. You know, our, yeah. You know, people come from college. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was I was kind of leaning towards the Thanksgiving weekend myself. But like I said, I wasn't at this meeting. And that was one of the reasons why, too, it gives us more options, not worrying about what's going on. The reason they were avoiding it is they were afraid that too many people would be out of town. That was the concern. But I think Beecher is more of an attraction for Thanksgiving than a distraction because people come here to eat. The family you know, they said that, is here. They said that for years, and I never experienced that even when we used to do the house walk. We never had an issue with, you know, nobody was in town that weekend. Everybody was, yeah. you know, afraid that people were out of town. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I never saw a, an indication about that. If that's the weekend that the house walk was always done in that late period, mm -hmm. um, Yeah. And it gives you another whole week of the tree being let down there and um, spent a lot of money on the tree. Light yeah. it up. <laughs> like yeah, that's, I hated the thought of doing it two weeks before Christmas. You get two weeks yeah, out of that. Like that's got out of time. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, maybe we come up with some way to do like something to get people to go down there during the week and see the tree, like some kind of light show with music on a, you know, it's seven o'clock on a Wednesday and a Friday or something to get people to go down there after the tree's lit, you know. I don't know. You could have those bells ring for an hour straight. But, you know, come up with something, <laughs> some kind of a start building it. I don't know. What's the pipe like dream, maybe. Yeah. Let's get the thing we're going to light it down first. Good, yeah. Get, get it lit. Get it All right. Lit. Yeah. So let's say, 26th? Let's say we're going to light it on the 26th then. We'll do it that Saturday on the 26th. Barring right. any I'll other I'll take that recommendation, recommendation back to the chair and run. Yeah. yeah. And let him, yeah. Hey, you know what? If the churches the want to do a choir scene or something on a different day at the village Christmas tree, that's fine. Yeah, yeah we'll be there all day. Exactly. Yep. The yeah. yeah, and all the trustees for the choir board. Not this time. So, okay, I'll get the next one. All right, so there's that. And then the uh, village uh, receives two proposals for video production of an educational series on the proposed referendum. Um, some edited text is enclosed along with uh, the two video proposals. Uh, the committee would like to seek a not to exceed 5000 for the production of these videos uh, using design funds in the general fund for the police station and giving them the authority to enter into an agreement uh, on one of these proposals. Uh, this way we can then begin on the video. The, the email that Trustee Usession sent out with the edits, were there any edits on it? Like you said, there was red crossed out, but I didn't see any. Yeah, I didn't see uh, There's no edits on it. The, yeah, when, yeah, when he well, sent his... Here. That's what I'm asking. Oh, there's nothing in here. Oh. Yeah, he added, he made edits, but that's the thing is, we're going to chop it into six little snippets now. It's going to be totally different once the video production company gets <laughs> in here and does their thing. So don't get hung up on what I wrote. It's going to change entirely. Yeah. yeah. Then, I, then I'll just give... Two general suggestions. One, I saw the public works one. There's 20 minutes. There's absolutely no way we're gonna get yeah. anyone. No. I mean, to watch a 20 minute. I had to break it up into like three sessions. I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I assume since we're having the times were different back then. Right? Yeah, I get it. But I mean, now it's just yeah. That's that's way. I mean, that's. I mean, 
know, we're going to have several little short yeah. ones, little, um, many, you know. Yeah, and I'll, I'll wait until the text comes out then, too, because I'm going to make a comment about the finance one, and I understand most of it, and that's still confusing, so I think we need to make that a lot simpler. And the production company will really rewrite the whole thing, because if you watch uh, some videos called Mantino Matters, Yes. That's probably the company we're going to choose, but watch those videos. They're three minutes long, and they cram a lot of stuff in three minutes. Yeah. But the, the it's... Finger? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But That's the name of the company? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But it's very well, I mean, they don't sit there with, you know, a talking head on the screen for three oh. minutes. I mean, it, you it's know... Very Marcy it's, wanted to move there after she watched yeah. it. I said, is it, I said, is it bad that I want to move to Antino after seeing this video? The video looks it freaking was just, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're a little present, yes, I might be. That might be bad That's pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> but they had somebody talking, and then as she continued talking, face was gone. I mean, you still heard the voice in the background. They had drone views of what she was talking about. They had little videos of clips of things they were doing in town. So it Animation. wasn't like sitting and sitting and watching someone, you know, talk into a camera that you know it, it really, really well done Listen videos. Listen to the wind what? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it was really a very engaging video. Yes, it, it was. was. There were two then there they was had, a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. There was. Then there was a resident talking about her view of all the things she loved about Mantino, but instead of just, you know, they would they would video her and then pan over to all the things that were being spoken of. So, I mean, it, so, it was very interesting. So the production company's going to handle text, yeah. everything, yeah. videos, okay. Is it these well, Latino Matters videos? Yes. I think so, yeah. What, what yeah, is yeah. it on? That's what the series is. Like YouTube or? And, yeah, you can find them on YouTube. And the lawyer has to double check all of our scripts too. Okay. He's got to make sure that we yeah. are, because we are have very specific parameters yeah. of what we can and cannot say in these, so. Not to exceed and then let Ben decide. There, we had two proposals. Uh, yeah. There's one that works for Crete and made some very engaging videos for Crete, but the Mantino Matters ones just has a bad flair. <laughs> and it really has a flair. Right? Right. It just <laughs> it it. I'm one second in and I'm enthralled. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, I thought it was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. So uh, I will uh, propose a motion for a not to exceed for the production of the um, educational series on the proposed uh, referendum for the police station of five thousand dollars. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion. Roll call. Kaparos. Yes. Gianotti. Yes. Terry. Yes. Stacy. Yes. Kaparos. Yes. Okay. And, and that will conclude my per report. All right. Any old business to come before the board? I got a couple quick things. Uh, this Sunday is the Easy Tones Polka Band. Uh, oh, it's yeah. our second to last uh, concert in the park. It's from 4 to 7, and Polish cuisine will be available available for purchase. Um, I'd like to thank the people who signed up and actually participated in the dunk tank. Our code enforcement officer, Trustee Stacy, Trustee Terry, and Trustee Giannotti. Um, I know you guys have to go anything into the front of the dirt, though. Um, so I'd like to thank them for showing up and participating. They got dunked yeah, a lot. Thanks for assisting all those <laughs> wonderful kids. <laughs> and trustee yeah. Usession. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm ready to trustee yeah. Usession. He was there, too. I want to thank the fire department kids. for having clean, warm water. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't warm when I was in it. <laughs> thank you for warming it up for everyone else. <laughs> um, and I think this is on our old business. I know the board talked about it a long time ago. Um, our office hours. Now that we have an extra uh, additional person, we revisit if the board's interested in maybe having an evening one day a week or a week every other weekend or something like that for the residents for to have the village hall open. Like I said, it was years ago that we discussed that. I don't remember what it was or why we did or didn't do it. Or well, what years the ago, was. we used to have Saturday mornings, I believe, way back when Nancy <laughs> worked here. Friday evenings at one point, we had Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings. And basically, it was due to staff cutbacks, and uh, I believe people went down to part-time. They kind of eliminated some staff back in 07, 08, during the great well, we really were not getting many people coming in on those days, either. Mm -hmm. Now that we've done everything online, you can do any business with the village at all on our website. I don't know if people are going to come in on the weekends that much.
believe we rekindled the evening hours because the mayor at that time wanted night office hours for yeah. himself. Yeah. And he wanted somebody here with him to close locked doors, whatever, so he had evening hours when the mayor held office hours. But again, yeah, it didn't last long because no one came to see the mayor. <laughs> 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 and no one would come. Um, so I mean, is it something we could look at maybe come up with? I mean, or let, unless the board's just like no one else, everyone else is like no. Maybe see what we can do. Do you have any suggestions? Would you prefer a Saturday night? I, I would over say, evening? I mean, I don't know when they're busy or like one stuff's due. I mean, maybe like one night shift and then the next weekend on Saturday or something to split up to give people opportunities. And if no one shows up, we do for a month or three months, whatever it is, and no one shows up, then I mean, we offered it to the, the public and they didn't use it, so we'll you know, go back. And either way you do it, you have to do it either Saturdays or a specific evening, because if you're doing alternating days, people are going to be able to track it back. Yeah, I think so. I don't, whatever has worked in the past, I don't know what has or hasn't been proposed or what can or can't be done. Um, it's just, I mean, I don't know. we don't need to decide it now. It's just something to be brought up and maybe we can come up with some solutions, something to try. And if it doesn't work, then here it is. I'm a world right? Mm -hmm. As yeah, long as you bring it up in a meeting, as long as it's you to get the feel of the Yeah, like I said, if, yeah. if the board decides whatever or staff decides like whatever and it doesn't get used. We gotta talk to staff and see. Mm -hmm. it, it's kinda hard to say all of a sudden now I mean, no, you, know, you gotta have staff on board with it. No, yeah, that's why it's a so discussion. Like contract that specifies what their hours are. We also have nine million people who can fill those spots. Right. That all for you. No, any, um, new, any other old business? Yeah, just want to bring to your attention uh, the sprinkler demonstration that the fire district is sponsoring. Uh, mm -hmm. 3 to 6 of a house sprinkler system up in the country. Like they're going to light on fire until the sprinkler's on? Because <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I just have to bring it up. Mm -hmm. They're installing that in their new home. I just want to go see the new house, to be honest. <laughs> All right, any new business to come before the board? Okay, can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion on the floor, is there a second? Second. A lot of seconds. Roll call. Gross? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Gennady? Yes. Gross? Yes. 